A couple of years ago, I made a series of videos on deferred rendering in Game Maker, and that was all well and good, but in the intervening year and a half or so, Game Maker has added a couple of different features that make this a little bit easier than it used to be. And given the fact that we now have, for example, direct access to the depth buffer, I've kind of been wanting to remake those videos lately, so let's do this. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome to Deferred Rendering in Game Maker, or if you've been here before, welcome back. So if you've never dabbled in Deferred Rendering before, it is a bit of a different philosophy when it comes to doing lighting calculations in a 3D scene. So what you're probably familiar with is known as forward rendering, that is when you do your lighting calculations immediately upon drawing every single object in the scene. And that's all well and good, it's intuitive, it's easy to explain, and it is most likely how you would conceptualize doing 3D lighting in your head the first time you approach the subject. Deferred rendering, on the other hand, takes the somewhat counterintuitive approach of rendering every object in your game to the screen, but instead of doing all the final lighting calculations and whatever else calculations right then and there, it's going to instead save basic information about the scene, so things such as diffuse color, surface normals, specular information, so on and so forth to temporary render targets, which is to say in Game Maker parlance uh, surfaces. These are collectively referred to as the geometry buffer or the G buffer. And then combining all that data, doing all the lighting calculations. And if you do everything correctly, it will come out looking exactly the same as it would if you did a forward render. And given that it sounds like we're now doing a lot more work to accomplish basically the same thing, it does raise the valid question of why you would do this which I would like to talk a little bit about before getting into writing any code. So, despite what you might read on the internet, um, neither deferred or forward rendering is inherently better than the other, and there are, in fact, other approaches to rendering that you could take. Uh, forward plus is something else you might have heard of, which I'm not going to get into here. Uh, ray tracing is a thing, which I'm not going to get into here. So, at least in my view, there are two main uh, cases where deferred rendering has an advantage over forward rendering. One is if you have a very crowded scene with a lot of geometric density, and if you have a lot of objects that are overlapping each other, you're going to end up spending a lot of time doing lighting calculations on objects which are not actually going to end up on screen. For example, if you have like a, a big like mountain or castle or something off in the distance, if you draw that first, and if you do all your lighting calculations on that big mountain or castle or whatever in the distance, and then you draw in the in the near ground a um a series of like small trees or bushes or NPCs or fences or something like that. Doing the lighting calculations on every pixel of the objects in the background is basically going to be a waste of time because those pixels didn't actually end up on screen. Meanwhile, in the land of deferred renderers, if you draw everything to the screen before doing your lighting calculations, you draw everything to your geometry buffer. When you later go to do the deferred pass where you do all your lighting calculations, you are only going to actually do your potentially very expensive lighting calculations on pixels that you know are actually in view of the screen. So because of this, if your game is very geometrically complicated, so if there's a lot of stuff that's potentially being drawn over other stuff, you can potentially save a lot of rendering time despite having a um, what basically boils down to a fairly expensive post-processing pass. Post -pro wow. Post-processing pass, that's hard. That is why in large AAA open world games, you often see deferred renderers used over forward renderers. A second reason that deferred renderers can be more efficient than forward is if you have a lot of lights in a scene, uh, it can be, deferred renderers can be a lot more efficient when it comes to computing lighting for the reasons that we mentioned earlier when it comes to not spending time processing pixels that are just going to be drawn over. And also for a few reasons, which I think are fairly interesting, which I'll maybe not mention right now, but save for a later point in the series. One noticeable disadvantage of using a deferred renderer is that while in a forward renderer, um, transparency and alpha effects in 3D are moderately cursed. Like, you can deal with transparency and alpha effects in 3D in a forward renderer, but it's not a lot of fun. In deferred rendering, that just goes way out the window because the nature of the geometry buffer means that you can really only resolve a single thing at each pixel. You can't store information about multiple things at each pixel, that's kind of the point. There's things that you can do to kind of sort of get around this problem later on, which I'll probably discuss. Anyway, if you are making a game that has a lot of transparency effects, like glass and water and whatnot, uh, first, I would recommend rethinking that a little bit and deciding if you really need all those transparency effects. And second, I would, I would use a forward renderer for that. I would not even attempt that with a deferred renderer. Obligatory prerequisites before we get started. Deferred rendering is one of the more advanced things that you can do in Game Maker in general. 
you're going to want to know how 3D and Game Maker works as well as just graphics in general work like the back of your hand. That includes not only basic 3D setup and basic lighting calculations. You're going to want to know about texture samplers and how different render targets, multiple render targets work. I'm not sure if I would go as far to say that deferred rendering is like the final exam of rendering a scene in 3D, but it certainly is the culmination of a bunch of different separate bits of knowledge that you've been accumulating over the course of your adventures in computer graphics. If you'd like a refresher on all that stuff, I have like a hundred and something different videos on 3 in Game Maker, which you can go and peruse. I'll have a link to that playlist popping out of the side of the screen and in the description of the video. One more thing before I get into writing any code, I'm going to be doing all of my lighting calculations in this deferred renderer series in view space. You're probably used to doing lighting calculations in the world space. That's generally where you would do everything uh, if you are doing a forward renderer. Uh, view space, if I may pull up this evergreen comic strip again. View space is when everything in your 3D scene has been transformed relative to the camera. And you can transform anything from world space into view space by simply multiplying it by the view matrix of the camera. And the reason that I'm going to do this is because when we put everything back together in the deferred pass, uh, it's going to make the math quite a bit simpler. It is totally possible to do a deferred renderer in world space, but you will have to do a little bit more work to, um, to get there, which I'm not going to discuss here. So let's write some code. So I'm going to start off with the basically the same sample project as I had last time. So we've got a little 3D demo scene with some nice mountains in the distance and a, a light that follows the player and whatnot. All right. Um, I've also gone ahead and included a little function called surface validate, which does exactly what it sounds like. I've talked about this in videos in the past. Uh, this is just going to make sure that one, a surface exists, and b, that it's of the of the correct dimensions as you request. And if if that's not true, it's going to give you a new one. Uh, this is a handy way of avoiding having to write surface exists, surface create about a hundred million times. Uh, you could extend this to also account for surface format, but I'm only going to use surface underscore rgb8 u norm. Uh, for this demo, so I don't really need, uh, I don't really need that right now. The way that I'm going to set this up is that I'm going to use a geometry buffer comprised of three parts. That's going to be diffuse color, uh, fragment depth, and fragment normal. Uh, however, I'm only actually going to need to create two surfaces. I'm going to need surface, um, let's call it G buff diffuse. Initialize that to negative one as well as um, G buff normal, initialize that to negative one, and I'm not actually going to create one of these for depth because uh, in 2024.6 GameMaker finally gave us access to the depth buffer of surfaces and we can uh, we can use those as textures and whatnot and that's going to save us the trouble of having to keep track of that ourselves. Um, you could also by the way use just the regular application surface for at least one of these, probably the diffuse color information because that's a perfectly valid surface that already exists. But I feel like I should at least like keep track of that um, surface myself just to like go through the motion. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that myself. So uh, we're going to go into a draw event. Let's, um, you can do pre-draw. Uh, should I use pre-draw? I guess I will. Um, lately I've decided that it, it makes my life so much easier if I take care of camera stuff and surface stuff in the Game Maker pre-draw event. Uh, because that runs right before the regular draw event. Um, I didn't really care about that sort of thing in videos in the past, but I've been doing it more and more lately. So let's say gbuff underscore diffuse is going to equal surface validate. Uh, we're going to validate the diffuse color surface. Uh, the width is going to be window get width. And window get height. Uh, we can do the exact same thing for the normal part of the G buffer. And like I said, depth is, is already part of the um, of this surface, so we don't have to take care of that ourselves. Okay, uh, next, I guess this is as good a time as any to go and, um, uh, yeah, let's comment out uh, all of the existing uh, lighting uniforms and whatnot that I'm going to be, uh, that I was previously rather drawing the scene with. So we can, uh, we can just run the game with all that commented out and it's going to be an unlit scene. That's not too exciting. Also no alpha testing apparently, uh, because alpha in 3D sucks. Let's see. Do I want to do source control things? I guess I will. Can 
This will do source control things. Uh, let me go and create myself a shader. This can be SHD. I'm gonna call it shader deferred gbuff. Uh, this is going to be a pretty basic 3D shader. We're going to be uh, making sure that we're actually inputting our lighting information. Uh, let's uh, create ourselves a third varying, varying vec3 v underscore v normal. I don't think I actually need to set up anything else except for v underscore v normal equals, and we're gonna do a little bit of uh, transformation for the input normal like this. Uh, so vector four input normal homogeneous coordinate of one. Hey. Uh, we're going to transform that into view space like I said earlier. And I'm also gonna to wanna to normalize this. Make sure it has a unit length of one. And we are just going to take the dot x, y, z um, of, the, uh, of the normal transformed into view space. Let's head on over to the fragment shader. Uh, we can take our new varying with us. So uh, using multiple render targets, instead of saying gl underscore frag color equals something, I'm gonna to wanna to say gl underscore frag data equals something. And uh, that something is going to be just the diffuse color sampled off of the gm underscore base texture. Uh, we're also going to want gl underscore frag data index one to contain our normal information. Uh, it would be lovely if we could just say that dot x, y, z and call it a day. But uh, if you are, uh, if you know anything about encoding normals as a 8-bit color value, uh, we're going to need to uh, transform this thing's range from negative 1, positive 1 to 0, positive 1. And we can simply do that by taking this, uh, multiplying by 0 0.5 and adding 0 0.5. Uh, that's a little transformation that we can, um, that we can reverse in the deferred pass. And I think that's all I need to do to set up the geometry buffer. Uh, this is, again, very simple code for rendering the, uh, the initial pass of the scene. Oh, you know what I will want to do? Um, let's do a little bit of depth testing. I can say uh, if this diffuse color, uh, that alpha is less than, let's say, just say 0 0.9, save ourselves some headache. Uh, we can just discard. So we'll um, discard fragments with an alpha value less than 0 0.9. Uh, that will account nicely for the transparent area around the duck sprite. Transparency and deferred renderers sucks. Um, let's see, what next? So let's actually uh, stage these textures for uh, these surfaces for drawing to, shall we? So if we say surface set target, uh, our, um, our first surface can be self.gbuff diffuse. Uh, by the way, if you're new around here, I tend to prefix my instance variables with self. Most people think I'm insane, but I'm the one making the video, so I get to, I get to do it anyway. Secondly, we're going to want to stage our uh, normal surface. So surface set target extended. Uh, the index for that is going to be one and the surface is going to be uh, self.gbuff normal. Uh, I think this would be a pretty good time to also apply our shader set. SHD underscore deferred gbuff. Uh, all the way at the bottom when we're done, we can shader reset. Apparently I already am. So I can just leave that as it is. And uh, that should uh, that should render our geometry buffer. Uh, this is pretty simple. Um, if I were to draw a surface stretched uh, like that so that it fills the screen, uh, we should see pretty much the same thing that we saw before and you didn't like, what didn't you like? Uh, oh, this needs to be a vector four. I'm just giving it a vector three. So we, we're gonna need to give um, gl underscore frag data index one a vector four uh, with this on the x y z and uh, and one on the w. All right, now we should be really. Oh, I also need to. Uh, that was another thing that I need to do. It's it's two. It's almost three in the morning. Give me a break. Uh, surface reset target. Okay, now can we have our, there we go. So we've got our, uh, our diffuse color, no lighting. Uh, it is customary when you set up a, a deferred renderer to also draw all the extra surfaces um, that you're working with like over on the side. Uh, something like draw surface stretched. Or let's just do draw surface extended. Um, that can be 
say the diffuse, put that in the corner, X scale, can do that, say a quarter scale, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, no rotation, so you don't score white color, full transparency, and then we can also draw the um, G buff underscore normal. Uh, let's say right underneath that, also at a quarter scale, and this is just going to be a handy way of allowing us to um, easily like debug a uh, if something isn't being rendered correctly to the geometry buffer, it'll allow us to see it. Anyway, we can see that we've got our two our main surface, like our, our diffuse color surface, filling up the screen, and our uh, our normal surface over here in the corner. Uh, if you are at all familiar with normal maps, you probably somewhat recognize this warm-ish color scheme. Um, that is uh, that is all the normals in the scene transformed into uh, into view space, and uh, we will of course be recon using that to reconstruct the scene in the deferred pass. By the way, speaking of normal maps, uh, if you are into doing that sort of thing, and I'm not going to do that here, uh, you can go and uh, sample from the normal texture in the uh, in the GBuff shader. Uh, you will, of course, have to do all the relevant transformations. You will have to go through the TBN matrix and uh, transform the uh, the normal from tangent space to uh, view space. Perfectly allowed. Uh, there's also plenty of other things that you might encode as part of a geometry buffer. If you're doing anything with specular reflections, you probably would like a specular uh, part of the uh, surface for the uh, for the G buffer. Um, if you're working with like a bunch of different materials, you might want to encode material ID as part of the G buffer. I'm not sure if I'll go there in this uh, in this little series. I might. You can do some fun things with it, but uh, for now, I'm just going to be working with diffuse and normal. All right. So we're going to keep things simple for now. And uh, with that, this is this is pretty much it uh, for this video. Uh, next time, I would like to go and combine all this into the final image. Uh, that's going to be where the real fun begins. That video is probably going to be significantly longer than this one. Uh, what did we do here? So uh, that's going to be it for today. Uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of the video. I like to post stuff about the weird side of Game Maker, so if you're interested in 3D stuff or shader stuff like this, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, link to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out the Steam page for Wizardux, that is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff, the link to that can be found down below as well. I hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to help out, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.